Hello math nerds! Welcome to video 7 of the unit circle series. So now we're going to bring the trig functions into the equation. We're going to figure out how sine x and cosine x relate to our unit circle. So we're going to go back to the good old geometry days and talk about um, a fun person that I know you love. Let me pull it down. Sokotoa! Woohoo! We love that Sokotoa. It sounds like a camp that you would go to in the summer, doesn't it? I know, right? Uh, and math nerds do go to that camp. Ha ha. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, so what we'd like to do is let's define sine and cosine. Um, and I dropped my theta, I'm sorry when I say that, but you've got to, you can't have a sine without a theta and you can't have a cosine without a theta because it is asking for some relationship uh, to an angle. So for sine theta, uh, and this only works in a right triangle, right? Only works in a right triangle is opposite over hypotenuse. And I'm not going to write out hypotenuse. I'm just going to do that. That's what so means. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So in Sokotoa, that's opposite hypotenuse. So for cosine, the ka in Sokotoa is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay? So now we're going to talk about sine and cosine of 30 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our handy dandy little triangle we've been using since video whatever to talk about. And so if I want to do the, the sine of 30, it says I have to go opposite. And I'm going to go opposite, which is one half, over. So I'm going to do that one half over the hypotenuse. Well, isn't that nice? The hypotenuse is one. And we love that. So it just really is one half. That's so easy. See, having a unit circle is really nice because that radius is one. If I want to do the cosine of 30 degrees, that is adjacent. So adjacent means the side right next to you. Oop, you can't see my little triangle, I don't think. Let me move that up. And so here is my 30 degrees and my adjacent side is root 3 over 2. So root 3 over 2 and 1 which is simply root 3 over 2. So to find the sine and cosine of um, these special triangles is real easy. And the reason is if your hypotenuse is 1, um, it's just really that opposite or that adjacent side that tells you what your sine or cosine is for this particular thing, right? And then uh, if I ask you for sine of pi 6, remember that um, pi 6 is the uh, arc that is across from 30 and I remember that because they're not the same number. I know that's so weird um, So I do know that they go together. So the sine of pi 6 is the same as the sine of 30 It can be asked either way. So that's one half and I'm just making the point to do that for the cosine as well So that is root 3 over 2 Very cool. All right, so um, Let's go to the point on the unit circle. I'm just going to it's underneath, you know. I always hide it from you. Um, so let's go and look at that. So I'm going to look at the circle, and if I go to 30 degrees, there's a point root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And that's the x and that's the y. But y'all, that that's what I got for the cosine, the root 3 over 2, the x. And that's what I got for the sine. Huh. Let's look at a general kind of... Um, triangle and see what's going on here. I think something crazy may be happening. So when we put the, the um, uh, points on the unit circle, this is the point x, y, right? So you go over x and you go up y and you hit that point in the unit circle and this is always 1. So if we write the cosine of theta for any theta, it's adjacent which is x over 1, which is simply x. If we write the sine for theta, that's opposite, which is y over 1, which is simply y. So, wow, that's really cool. So, in any unit circle value around the unit circle, if someone asks you the cosine of that angle, you can tell them what the x value is on the circle um, or how you move to get to that point on the circle 
re left or right, and that's going to be your cosine. If someone asks you about sine of anybody around the unit circle, any of those special points, all you have to do is say how you got there in the y fashion. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if somebody came up to me on the street, this happens all the time, and they said, um, hey, Kitty, um, what is the cosine of 30 degrees or pi 6? They could ask me other thing. I would say, well, cosine is the x movement, and I go over a lot to get to that point on the circle, and over a lot is root 3 over 2. So the cosine of pi 6 is root 3 over 2. If they said, what's the sign, I'd say, well, I go over a lot. That's not it. I go up a little. So the sign of 30 degrees is, or pi 6, is 1 half. So your x and y, your legs of your triangles, tell you the cosine and sine of all these special angles around the unit circle because the radius is 1, and that's your hypotenuse. Oh, my gosh. How cool is that? So let's get crazy and just ask some questions and see if we can answer them, okay? So I'm going to pick anybody around the circle. I'm going to pick a fourth, and I'm going to go a little over one. I think that's on the circle, right? I think it is. So if I ask for the cosine of 5 pi fourths, and I had my circle in front of me, that's moving, and it shouldn't be moving. There it is. All right, so if I want to know the cosine of 5 pi fourth, then I go, okay, where is that? It's right there. There's 5 pi fourth right there. It's a little over pi. That's how I know that. I go left, so it's negative, and all the 45s or all the pi fours have a root 2 over 2. So the answer to that, and, and look, there's the point. That x point is my cosine of that. So I'm going to write negative root 2 over 2. And that's the answer to that question. Isn't it crazy? If someone says find the sine of 2 pi thirds, then I am I go sine. Okay, sine is, um, that's opposite. And opposite is, okay, so sine is opposite. And opposite would be the y value, okay? So sine of 2 pi thirds, I have to go find the y value of that point. So 2 pi thirds is right there. How do I know that? 2 is 1 less than 3, which means I'm in the quadrant that's right in front of pi. I'm not there yet. And that's how I know. And after you work with this for a long time, you'll kind of figure that out. But for now. All right, so if I go to 2 pi thirds and I want to know the sign, it's the y value, right? And that's a big number, root 3 over 2. So from 0, I go over a little, but up, and that sign, a lot. So the answer to my question is root 3 over 2. It's the y value. So for any person around this circle, anybody around the circle, if somebody wants to know the cosine or sine, you just have to go find the x value or the y value of the point on the circle, and that is your sine and cosine for that particular angle. How about those crazy quadrantals? Let's talk a little bit about those. So what if I said, what's the cosine of pi? You would say to yourself, self, and then, and then, and then, you would have this little circle in your head. I know it's not a real good circle, it's okay. And you'd go from the middle to get to pi, because it's over there, I go left 1, and so the answer is negative 1, because that's the x movement. If somebody asks you for the sine of pi, you'd say, well, I go left 1, but I don't go up or down. So if I don't go up or down, that's 0, because this is x, and that's y. So from the center, how far this is left or right, and sine is up or down to get there. Okay? Isn't that fun? That's so not hard. We can do that because we've already found all the points around the circle. So in the next video, we will do some more of that and we'll talk about, well, what if I don't have a filled out unit circle? How can I do that a little quicker way? So come back. 
for the next installment of the Unit Circle videos.